Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex. Today we're going to be taking a look at Fist, forged in Shadow Torch on the Nintendo Switch. A Metroidvania, it's one that's been long awaited for me personally, but how does it stand up on the Switch and is it going to be worth your cash? Well, that's what I'm here to find out, so hit subscribe, but join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily, and let's get started. Fist then tells the story of a world that has been overrun, an animal inhabited world that is. Now six years ago basically the machine legion invaded and colonised this city. Rayton is our lead, the rabbit with a big old fist and he is fighting or at least was fighting for the resistance. On loss he basically went into hiding, keeping his head down and let's say following the new rules. That is at least until our friend is arrested. From here though what follows is an adventure to initially save our friend but it quickly evolves into fighting back against this invasion. Along the way as well we'll meet a huge cast of characters from the Legion to locals to a rat mafia. It is great writing throughout, a really likeable cast, a simple but effective plot and the world it's packed in it's just intriguing and you absolutely want to learn more. So Fist is a game I've been praising now for a good while over on PlayStation Corner. I first experienced it at launch on the PlayStation 5 and I absolutely adored it. From a gameplay perspective as well, you can actually expect the exact same here. A Metroidvania that has you traversing a number of connected areas that go on to make, by the end game at least, a sizable map with a runtime right around 12 to 15 hours. Like many in the genre though, the game's setup really is progress the location, find a locked door or location that cannot be reached yet and uncover the skill required to proceed. Here it really comes down to our title of Fist, that big mechanical weapon that was actually once a part of a much larger mech setup. We'll also then uncover some new abilities, think like a wall of jump and double jump is, is kind of, you know, I guess standard in the genre. The combat here though is less about let's say a constant flow of new weapons but rather you get free weapons or attachments so to speak for our fist that we can then upgrade with new combo attacks. Think the drill for example which yes can do some naturally serious damage but it can also be used to wind power some doorways or even allow us to fly over certain wind turbines. The combo driven weaponry though adds a constant sense of depth with progression though as you do quickly uncover not only what does maximum damage but also you'll learn to chain these abilities together, think a spin attack followed by an uppercut into a mid air attack, you feel powerful, it rewards practice and it looks honestly just kind of badass. You won't get bored of the fist, the drill or the whip throughout this experience, that is for sure. The game's combat then as well, it's less about invincibility frames and more about mastering the platforming to a fade attacks. It's particularly useful to master the dash ability. It's also going to be just as useful for traversal as well, it can definitely speed things up. Eventually you'll unlock a limited use secondary abilities as well, I think here a health kit, rocket launcher, even a parry ability that are selectable with the right stick, executable with the right trigger. Master these quickly but naturally use them sparingly because typically you're looking at two uses per item. This is all then topped off with a finisher move, a fancy animation that you can execute when an enemy flashes with a single button. If you were to get bored with this though, let's say the game has the option to turn the animation off should you prefer in its menus. Then let's talk difficulty, it's not an easy game this one, even with an easy and normal option it is known for its difficulty spikes and sadly that is still very much the case. Enemies and boss encounters can often feel unbalanced and that's particularly true towards the end game which has kind of been a problem now since launch. It has for many kind of led to a frustration at that end game so I do want to put that out there because that's not really changed. Fortunately though that said the game presents you frequently with automatic save points as well as more think traditional checkpoints. These allow you to not only repair any damage but refill secondary item uses and access that skill tree. The skill tree requires two things, cash and then what they call data discs. These can be found around the world and they cost a number and it kind of varies by the ability. Another thing that may frustrate as well is if you find yourself maybe stuck in a particular moment against a certain boss and you keep reloading back to that checkpoint, you cannot skip cutscenes and that was always a kind of painful point for me personally, I'm to watch it over and over again. 
With a sizable map as well, event traversal can be a pretty long-winded process at points, but fortunately, it keeps it consistently fresh with each location, giving us a different set of challenges, from caves that's a bit more aggressive in its danger, or cities that require, let's say, creativity around technology. The game will eventually as well present you with fast travel, which for me, it was definitely perfectly timed. So let's talk issues specifically around the Switch build, and unfortunately it's not perfect frame rate first off, it's not locked, there's locations where it becomes really apparent, the caves and the tower being two let's say earlier game examples, but it's not bad either, I'd say mid 20s and I was mostly able to handle it, but sometimes seeing that drop around let's say precision platforming, it's definitely not you know ideal. I'd say let's look to lock this out at 30 with a patch because right now in moments it definitely goes above 30 as well. You also won't notice the issue too much for at least the first few hours of gameplay. It's more kind of, let's say, location specific, it seems, over anything else. On the mention of locations, actually, as well as you do load into some areas, you will notice some aggressive stutters as it brings everything in, but these, they're no longer than a few seconds. I wouldn't really call them a detriment to the experience. On Switch then as well, between areas we are now greeted with much longer load screens which last around a minute. Fortunately though it's loading in a sizable area so I wouldn't say I looked forward to them but it wasn't too intrusive as I started to kind of anticipate where they would be. It did make the idea of fast travel although a little honestly less attractive. Finally, I did encounter the same bug twice towards the end game. Wasn't a big deal, but I had a group of enemies that I just couldn't connect with. No matter what I did, my attacks would not land. They didn't seem to be connecting with me either, so I actually had to quit out of the game and load back in so I could progress because they were essentially an obstacle in front of a locked door that had to be tackled first. Fortunately, two different occasions resolved itself both times, but definitely worth knowing going in. Overall, gameplay-wise, Fist is a great little Metroidvania. It comes with some compromises on the Switch, but I honestly anticipated that this is a big world. It's an impressive-looking world as well, and I still think it's somewhat impressive that they got this thing up and running with the hardware we have in hand. That said, though, it occasionally makes a hard game even harder as you have that system trained to keep up. Graphically then, for every great looking moment, there is an ugly one in here. Now, this is what I was most curious to see. Fist, it's an incredible looking game, this diesel punk world, stunning. And while I'd argue enemies a little bland for any build that is, I always still really enjoyed it. It's just as I said in its story, it's fascinating and the variety in location, it just leads to an engaging adventure. That said, on the Switch, you'll load in and all looks good in the opening area. They've kept much intact of that original design. Shadows are definitely dialed back, aggressively that is, and the lower resolution definitely impacts some of that, I guess, wow factor. But yeah, I was excited to see it, honestly, and on first loading in, I was impressed. I was actually really happy to see as well, they've made the subtitles a bolder font, which sounds like a small, like, you know, change, but over the original, which that wasn't the case, that's not going to be great for handheld play. Our lead and supporting caster against all of this really weak. We've lost nearly all of fur detail. They almost look like they are a resolution step below the rest of the game. And this is especially true in cutscenes where it's quite actually jarring how ugly it can get and how low the resolution can go. You'll see a ton of pixelation in these moments. As you do progress though, you get out of that first location, that first couple of hours, it gets actually a little bit worse as well, the caves again, and then the tower, there's a lack of shadow work now, and basically, it's made these locations that really relied on the shadow work feel particularly dark almost. At points, I turned to kind of tie up the brightness a bit by location. Again, look, I still think it's a good world, but it's definitely another case of compromise. Audio finally, good stuff, it's voice acted to a high degree, the acting is suitably over the top but that really matches this world, and sound effects some great accompaniment for the weapons and the traversal. Music is also strong here as it not only reinforces the action, but it often adds a layer of environmental almost effects to each of these areas. 
So the final verdict and fist as a game, I really like it on the PS5, it would be a great 8 out of 10 from me given the fact it has shortcomings but they are worth overcoming. On the Switch, it's still at that same feeling towards gameplay, but now we are introducing new issues, you know, frame rate wobbles, visuals with a serious downgrade at points, and some longer than expected load screens which slow down this journey. That all said though, I'm finding this one a hard one to score today, I'd still recommend the game if you have no other way to play. For me, it's a fun Metroidvania with a better than typical story in the world. I hope they do more in it because when it looks good, it's just a begging to be explored. Now I can't recommend basically the Switch as my first choice honestly, but if it's the only choice you have, I'm saying check it out, it's a good 7 out of 10 from me. Just come here with the right expectations and maybe check it out somewhere else if you can. Will you be checking out Fist then or holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe, but join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.